This is the story of one of the most biologically diverse environments found on Earth. A place not only of magical beauty, but also teeming with a bewildering array of life, and one which plays an essential role in the well-being of our oceans. On our journey, we'll explore some of its unique environments, from sunlit shallows to mysterious depths, and discover the secret lives that thrive and define life here on the reef. Our journey begins here, on the Caribbean coast of Belize, in the shallows of a dock where our world meets the sea. A different kind of life thrives. Amongst the discarded rubbish, many varieties of fish find shelter. In time, the sea will reclaim all of this. But for now, it is home for some. As we travel away from shore, the sand disappears under a bed of seagrass. At first sight, this seems a barren and desolate landscape, with sporadic traces of life here and there. Schools of small fish peck at the seafloor like underwater birds. A solitary spiny lobster nervously forages for food, constantly on guard. And with good reason. For here, predators also roam. This place is in fact rich in marine life. Many species found throughout the reef, like these horse-eye jacks, also exist here in good numbers. The Great Barracuda, a fearsome ambush predator found all over the world. This one shares its patch with the more docile nurse shark. The barracuda is a mid-water hunter, while the nurse shark rummages on the sea floor for crustaceans and small fish, therefore rarely coming into conflict. The sharks, however, do compete with stingrays as they forage for the same prey. solitary animals, some stingray live in small groups, perhaps for safety, or perhaps because local fishermen have used areas like these for generations to gut and clean their catch, offering a regular and easy meal. Whatever the reason for these gatherings, competition for food is fierce, and only the strong will survive. The seagrass also provides a nursery playground for smaller fish, like the yellow-tailed snapper, who practice safety in numbers. This school leads us further out onto the reef. The environment slowly begins to change.
like a desert oasis, these small coral outcrops are the true beginnings of the reef. Swaying gently in the current, these soft coral and sea fans provide sanctuary for small fish as they offer them much needed shelter from predators and provide plenty of food. The life force here is sunlight, and in the tropics that is seldom in short supply. Hard coral formations, like these star and brain corals, are also present, and it's these hard corals that form the building blocks to a more substantial reef system. Contrary to appearances, the coral fronds are not plants, but millions upon millions of animals called polyps, living together in vast colonies. The temperature remains roughly constant all year round, and any fluctuations by a few degrees would be catastrophic. But like plants, coral needs sunlight to survive. This is the framework on which coral reefs are built. And over the course of thousands of years, they become vibrantly beautiful, intricate structures that are abundant in marine life and are among the richest environments found on Earth. This is no exception, for here life flourishes. As we traverse dreamlike through this marine utopia, the sheer number of fish is truly astounding. Testament to the richness of these waters. The reef is a restless place. The tides and currents acting like relentless underwater winds keep the inhabitants on the move. Grants are amongst the most common fish of all and appear in huge numbers throughout the reef. They feed and move like flocks of birds in the air, finding shelter wherever they can, because predators are never far away. Of the many inhabitants found here on the reef, the spotted eagle ray is one of the most iconic. With the lines of a stealth bomber, the grace of a ballet dancer, and weapons at either end, teeth that can crack open the hardest shell, and a lot of stings in its tail. These gentle creatures effortlessly glide over the reef, constantly on the move, searching for the mollusks and crustaceans on which they feed. Reaching 16 feet in length, and with a wingspan of up to 10 feet, they are amongst the largest rays in the ocean. Occasionally seen in large shoals, these rays have also been known to porpoise on the surface to avoid sharks that prey on them.
By contrast, the southern stingray prefers to live a more sedentary life, burying itself in the sand for camouflage. Here it stays until nightfall, when it scours the reef for food. If disturbed or threatened, they are capable of a surprising turn of speed. A relative of the shark, stingrays are feared around the world, for they possess a serrated barb on their tail loaded with toxins which they can use in self-defense. Luckily, they lack aggression and will almost always prefer to beat a hasty retreat instead. Turtles are the gentlest creatures of the deep. This is a hawk's bill, so called because of its beak-like mouth. It is found across the tropics, spending most of its time on coral reefs and shallow lagoons, rather than the open ocean. It feeds on sponges and jellyfish, but for centuries man has fed on it. Like all turtles, it is slaughtered for its meat and its shell. Even turtle eggs are prized in some communities. However, today, they are more under threat through habitat destruction and pollution. The same threats facing the hawksbill also threaten coral reefs around the world. Both species and habitats are interlinked, and they both face uncertain futures. places, the reef gives way to mangrove stands. These slow-growing plants are tolerant to salt water and vital to the health of the reef. There is little about them that is hospitable to man. However, they provide shelter from tropical storms and hurricanes that plague the tropics in the summer months. But it's underwater where we see why these mangroves are so vital to the reef's inhabitants. They help to filter and aerate the water and provide a never-ending source of food and shelter. Their root system provide important nursery grounds for nearly all species of juvenile fish that are found throughout the reef. These tiny fish thrive in these nutrient-rich waters and once mature, will one day venture out into deeper water to repopulate the reef. The lives of these trees and the future of the marine life are essentially intertwined. As the light of the sun retreats over the horizon, the reef takes on an altogether different character. The elegant eagle rays now become ghostly figures of the night.
On the sea floor, nocturnal creatures emerge from hiding in search of food. This crab scampers across the rocky substrate, scavenging for anything edible. Many of the reef's inhabitants seek any shelter they can find. The normally placid yellow grunts that we see on the reef in daylight hours now become frantic, feeding on tiny nocturnal invertebrates. But this is only a brief bonanza. And before long, it's over. As a new day dawns, we find ourselves in deeper water. We have now reached the outer reef. Night hunters like this tarpon return from sorties on the reef and make their way back to their daytime retreats. This impressive two-meter tarpon are highly prized game fish and one of the few fish in the sea capable of surviving in both salt and fresh water. Given a chance, tarpon can live for 60 years. Their gleaming metallic looking armor plating have earned them another name, the Silver King. Life out on the reef is finding its natural rhythm once again, as our journey takes us out further to the edges of the reef. On these remote outer reefs, strong ocean currents collide with the reef walls, pushing deep water up to the shallows bringing with them valuable nutrients and in effect force feeding the reef's inhabitants. So long as the coral thrives, the reef is a happy hunting ground for a thousand different species of marine life. Under these favorable conditions, the coral and sponges grow to impressive size. These barrel sponges are large enough for a man to fit inside. The climate is so equable and the temperature so benign that these waters sustain the marine equivalent of a metropolis, vibrant and teeming with life. Coral 
reefs such as these take eons to form and make up no more than 1% of all the world's oceans, but provide a home for 25% of all known marine species. By any measure, coral reefs are one of the natural wonders of the world. Finally, we arrive at the drop-off. This is the border between land and the subterranean depths of the ocean where sunlight can barely reach. Ceaseless currents, fish gather in impressive shoals. Inevitably, such bounty attracts predators, and these stalking reef sharks await the opportunity to strike. Here, in the deep blue, is where our journey ends. It is time to leave this silent, hauntingly beautiful, self-contained world that asks nothing of man, other than to be left in peace. <laughs>